Sample surveys like the American Community Survey, or ACS, produce estimates based on a sample of the population rather than the full population, giving some uncertainty to the estimates they produce. This uncertainty, called sampling error, means that estimates from the ACS will likely differ from values obtained from a survey of the entire population. To assess an estimate's reliability or precision, data users can use multiple measures of sampling error, such as margin of error, standard error, and coefficient of variation. For comparisons based on ACS data, it's important to consider the sampling error associated with each estimate to make sure the observed difference between estimates represents a true difference that exists within the full population. For example, estimates for small geographic areas or small population subgroups may fluctuate dramatically from year to year, even when there's no meaningful change or difference. Why? Because the sample changes each year, and the number may only reflect that a different sample was pulled. To compare the data from year to year, the sampling error must be considered. Likewise, if analysts outline needs for policy or program development without considering whether estimates are reliable, it can lead to under or overestimating the target population. The Census Bureau provides margins of error, or MOEs, for ACS estimates to help users understand the impact of sampling error on data reliability. The MOE describes the likelihood that the sample estimate is within a certain range of the population value at a given level of confidence. The MOEs for published ACS estimates are provided at a 90% confidence level. From these MOEs, data users can calculate 90% confidence intervals that define a range expected to contain the true population value of an estimate 90% of the time. For example, data from the 2018 ACS one-year estimates indicate that 17.7% of children in Nevada are living in poverty. The corresponding MOE is 1. Calculate the 90% confidence interval by adding and subtracting the MOE from the estimate. A large MOE, and thus a wide confidence interval, indicates that the estimate contains a lot of uncertainty. In this example, the MOE is plus or minus one percentage point, meaning we can be 90% confident that the rate of child poverty in Nevada falls between 16.7% and 18.7%. The standard error is another measure of reliability. Standard error represents how much a sample estimate can be expected to differ from the actual population value. They're the basis for calculating MOEs and other measures of reliability. Standard errors are also needed to conduct statistical significance tests. Data users can calculate the standard error of an ACS estimate by dividing the MOE by 1.645. An estimate's standard error depends on the underlying variability in the population for that characteristic and the sample size used for the survey. In general, the larger the sample size, the smaller the standard errors of the estimates produced from the sample data. The coefficient of variation, or CV, is another useful measure of sampling error. It calculates the amount of sampling error relative to the sample estimate. A small CV means that the sampling error is small relative to the estimate. Data users can be more confident that the estimate is close to the population value. The CV is calculated by dividing an estimate's standard error by the estimate itself and multiplying by 100. The CV for child poverty in Nevada is 3%, meaning the amount of sampling error in the child poverty estimate is 3% of the estimate. One thing to keep in mind is that the CV is sensitive to the size of your estimate. A very small estimate in the denominator, like a 3% poverty estimate, will yield a large CV. The reverse category, a 97% poverty estimate, will yield a very small CV. As estimates approach 0 or 100, the CV is less useful to assess reliability. What's an acceptable amount of error? Unfortunately, there are no hard and fast rules. The tolerable range for sampling error depends on your goals, preferences, and need for precision. You don't want to provide estimates that are so unreliable or imprecise that they're not useful or could be misleading but you need to weigh those concerns against the importance of presenting the data that are available. One strategy used for Kids Count, a project of the Annie E. Casey Foundation, is to look at the width of the confidence interval around an estimate. Confidence intervals of less than 10 percentage points are considered reliable. You can also use the coefficient of variation. In general, CVs less than 30% indicate more reliable data 
though some organizations and data sources report estimates with CVs as large as 40% or even 60%. What can you do to ensure an acceptable amount of error? If estimates are imprecise, you can often combine data to increase your sample size and the precision of your estimates. You can switch from using one-year ACS estimates to five-year ACS estimates. You can merge subgroups together, for example, by combining data on children ages 0 to 4 with data on children ages 5 to 9. Or you can expand the geographic area by pooling several adjacent counties together to create a county subgroup. The best solution depends on your specific analytic need. The U.S. Census Bureau has more information on assessing the reliability of the ACS and how to conduct tests to make sure differences between estimates are statistically significant. From the ACS webpage, you can access ACS handbooks, the ACS accuracy of the data statement, and information on data suppression.